What are you working on? <laughs> I'm cleaning the inside of the hatch. So this is this whole section just hasn't been refinished uh, or hasn't been varnished, and we put. Um, like an insulation cushion, like a two inch cushion in here in the winter and it gets a lot of condensation. It's kind of gets moldy and stained. So we're gonna clean it and then refinish it, hopefully varnish it before winter. Maybe that will help with that. What are you working on? <laughs> uh oh. What do you want to say about this? So many many years ago i'd be like how long ago did i build this bowsprit seven I don't know. we didn't film seven it. or eight years ago no we were still blogging with still photographs so this cross brace there was some some issues with the grain i built this thing out of uh vertical grain dug fur and the bowsprit's all laminated vertically laminated in three pieces and then i cut these webs for the brace on the uh, pulpit platform. And it had some weird grain in it and I had to do some filling with epoxy and stuff. But over time, I think strain on the anchor and the bow roller actually created a little situation. And this thing started cracking away. This, These cross pieces are mortised into the uh, sprit by a little bit. And then That's screwed right down through there. the top and everything was epoxy laminated and then uh, I, what I do? Oh, we primed it, painted it. You know, it's all the same stuff, the same paint we used on the deck, the uh, Interlux Perfection. I gotta pull this platform, the anchor roller, and probably, I don't wanna take these uh, stanchion bases off, but I think I can move this up enough, disconnect the lifelines and lift this pulpit up enough that I can get it out of the way so I can take this piece out. I'm gonna have to take the, I'm gonna have to build a new cross member. I need to go down to the shed and take inventory of the uh, amount of G10 I have left from the chain plate project and then we'll see. Can you see me now? Anyway, yeah. To make that new piece of web that goes on the bow sprit, I ripped down some half inch sheets of G10 that I'm gonna laminate. I ripped them down to five and a half, which is the height of the webbing. And that cross brace is, it's a little more than an inch and a half, but I figure with the, between the layers of epoxy in between each of the three laminates, uh, probably gonna be pretty darn close. I noticed um, on the end grain, it seems like there was like a powdery mildew or some sort of a mold that grew inside of the wood after it was sealed and, and put together. And once we applied the polyurethane coating, that just it's like a wood fungus that got in between the grain. Yeah, there's something weird going on in there. And also with the grain, you can see the grain is more of a diagonal rather than nice and straight like the rest of the bowsprit was. These were the offcuts from the uh, from the three planks that I laminated to create the bowsprit. So anyway with the strain and stress on the anchoring platform i figured i'm gonna go with g10 i'm gonna secure the heck out of it and uh make it work the web is uh about 18 inches long so mark these things out at 18 and then i'm just gonna chop off the excess and then uh, whip up some epoxy and glue these things up and clamp them now i'm just gonna rough it up with some 40 grit All right, wiping everything down with acetone and I'm gonna whip up some epoxy. Moved inside where it's cool and shady. Uh, it's not exactly cool, but oh, gonna use some 105 resin and 205 slow because it's like 95 degrees out right now. So also using uh, 403 microfibers for some filler. So I don't want this too thick, but I don't want it so thin that it squeezes out and starves the joint. So I'm going to gradually add this 403. The microfiber is pretty weird. It clumps up pretty fast. So, and even with the slow hardener, this stuff's going to kick off in probably about 
I'll bet you I've got 10 to 12 minutes of working time with this pot of, pot of epoxy. So this is just some 403 in a different container. I did this same kind of lamination, the G10 for the base plate on our windlass installation. And you can go back and check out that video. So that seems about right. Oh baby. I gotta spread this out. Try not to sweat on it. Let's get this stuff out of the cup before it blows up on me. So this is the middle section. It needs to, it's sanded on both sides. So this side's been abraded and scuffed. I'll come back tomorrow, unclamp it, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, I got everything on the pulpit loose. And I hooked up a uh, bridle to a halyard, and I'm gonna try and lift this thing off. wiring for the nav lights. So I got this thing hanging up out of the way. I just got to chisel this thing out and uh, then I can cut the G10 f uh, filler piece to fit. Yeah, that's pretty creative. So I made the template of the piece that I need to duplicate onto the laminated block of G10, inch and a half thick, almost 18 inches wide. This thing is a brick. So anyway, I gotta fasten this down with double stick tape. And I've got my pattern bit in my router. It's not a pattern bit, but I've got a templating uh, collar on the uh, cutter bit. And this thing, it's a straight flute. It's not the best for the situation. You know, I'd rather have like a upcut spiral twist to it, but it is what I have and that's what I'm gonna use right now. So let's get this thing set up. Tape, get it pretty close. So I also put double stick tape because there's no way to fasten this thing based on the routing operation. There's no way to fasten this thing to the work surface. So I got to glue it down. So I've maxed, maxed out the uh, depth of plunge on the uh, router, so I'm gonna play connect the dots to cut this last about a half an inch that I gotta go. And I'm gonna try and cut it out with the jigsaw, even though cutting G10 with the jigsaw sucks and it's very difficult. It's smoking. All right, so 
so I burned through a few jigsaw blades and peppered this one up with a bunch of holes, which helped cut it out. So I switched collets and I'm switching bits. And this one's gonna clean up everything on the inch. <sighs> template. Take it back to vote and see if it fits. God, I hope it fits. So I got this thing drilled out. It actually goes like this. Fits in the mortise. I had to do a lot of adjusting here, but got it set up for a couple of vertical screws into the bowsprit. And then now I just got to pre-drill the bowsprit and prep it for epoxy. And I think down here, I'm going to stick a couple of diagonal screws in to keep it from possibly teetering. All right, one last test fit before glue up. So pulling a straight edge off this thing it's really dang close i might need to sand a little bit off the top once i get this thing glued on i'll test fit the pulpit and then make some adjustments with the grinder from there but so i checkered this thing up with the dremel tool uh just to give it some tooth now i'm going to wet it all out with uh unthickened epoxy then i'll thicken up the rest of the epoxy to glue this thing down I got this thing installed, you saw that. Um, put a couple of coats of primer on it and then just shot it with some white rattle can paint just for now. Maybe at some point when we touch up other spots on the boat with linear polyurethane, then I'll, uh, probably not, but I'm fooling myself into thinking that I can come and touch this up, whatever. I'm just putting the bank plates back on and then we're gonna drop this, uh, drop this pulpit down, put it into place. One side of that fluid. There you go. Did you put a washer on there? Yes. Final step in the repair. So what do you think? You happy? I'm happy it's done. That one little thing caused quite a bit of headache. Say goodbye. Bye bye. <laughs> so ugly. <laughs>